Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are going to take a broad look at all of the important metabolic pathways you need to know for the MCAT. In future videos, we will look at the specifics of these pathways. For today, we just want to focus on what are the inputs and what are the outputs for these pathways, and how do they connect to each other. We will begin by talking about the ultimate sources for all of the compounds that go into the various metabolic pathways. There are three macromolecules you need to worry about for the MCAT. We've got proteins, we've got fats, and we have carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are going to primarily enter metabolic pathways through glycolysis. So let's draw that first. A major product from glycolysis is acetyl-CoA. Technically first it's pyruvate, then we've got acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA will then enter the TCA cycle inside the mitochondria. So let's add that to our diagram. The TCA cycle is going to produce some very important compounds. It's going to make NADH, FADH2, as well as some ATP. NADH and FADH are going to move to the electron transport chain to be turned into even more ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. So again, let's add this to our diagram. So if we zoom in on our TCA cycle, we know we're going to make a little bit of ATP. We're going to make some NADH, and we're going to make some FADH2. Now, as I said, the NADH and FADH2 are going to move to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is going to take that NADH and FADH2 to produce even more ATP. We're making energy here. This is our story of carbohydrates. Where do the other things fit in? Let's take a look at fats first. Fats, or triglycerides, will undergo the process of beta oxidation. During beta oxidation, again, we are going to produce some acetyl-CoA as well as some molecules that are going to sound familiar. We're going to make some NADH and some FADH2. Now, we know what our NADH and FADH2 are going to do. They are going to go right on in to the electron transport chain, again, to make ATP. This is the name of the game. This is what we're trying to do. Carbohydrates, ultimately, they're going to be metabolized in ATP. Fats, they're going to be metabolized and turned into ATP. Now, protein metabolism, that's where things get pretty tricky, at least much trickier than beta oxidation and glycolysis. Luckily for the MCAT, you don't need to know all that much to get protein catabolism questions correct. Really, you just need to understand that different amino acids feed into different portions of either the TCA cycle directly or somewhere upstream of the TCA cycle through you know, pyruvate or acetyl-CoA. So let me draw that in kind of generally. I'm just going to move proteins over here. So I'll draw them in yellow just so it shows how whimsical it is. Proteins, you know, maybe we'll get some pyruvate, maybe some acetyl-CoA. Otherwise, it'll just come into different parts of the TCA cycle. And just just like everything else, when we're breaking down these proteins or amino acids, we're going to be producing some amount of ATP. This is not a lot of ATP compared to a carbohydrate or to fats. So this is usually at a last resort. The body doesn't like to break down proteins for energy. Now that we have this essential framework built, we can begin diving into it more deeply. Let's add the physiological sources of glucose. We know we can get it from food. We can also get it from breaking down glycogen. Well, where is glycogen stored? Glycogen is stored in our muscles and in the liver. For triglycerides, we have our diet. We have just food. Eat a stick of butter. It can also be broken down through the destruction of adipose tissue. In the next few videos, we're going to take an even closer look at all of these pathways to see which specific enzymes you need to know for the MCAT. And no, it's not every enzyme you learned in Biochemistry 1 or even Biochemistry 2. The MCAT is going to expect a good understanding of kind of the bare bones. So that's what we're going to hit really hard in the coming videos. But I want to thank you so much for watching our video on the overview of metabolism, and I will see you next time.